While the Victor versus Enigma matchup is not new to the CC metagame, it's honestly one of my favorite matchups to play right now. The matchup has a lot of nuance, and it really allows both players to show how much they know their own deck and how much they know their opponent's deck. Enigma's primary goal in this matchup is to flood the board, put as many ward auras in play as she possibly can, while also using cards like Phantasmoclasm, Miraging Metamorph, and Commanding Conqueror to pressure Victor and make their blocking hands really awkward. From the Victor standpoint, this is where you bring in all of your go-again cards. We're talking about Zealous Belting, Enlightened Strike, Outmuscle. We want to be attacking Enigma as much as physically possible to make sure we're keeping the board clear and pressuring their life total and also utilizing cards like Command and Conquer to try and get their arsenal. Thanks for stopping by guys. I hope you enjoy the match. All right, we're playing against Enigma and against Enigma, we want to be going as aggressive as possible here. I did win the die roll and was able to go first, which I'm a really big fan of. Um, I like passing on turn zero unless I have like a really positive turn that I can just throw at them. But after our opponent does put something into play, instead of just letting it sit in play, I would rather attack them for nine because there's a good chance that they don't have all three blocks. Now, they show us a three block and two pummels, which is great. So it means that we basically just keep the board clear and we go into our next turn when we had a pretty lackluster hand. You'll also notice I chose not to arsenal the boulder drop. I think that's just like pretty much always the correct decision um, given the circumstances there. So I don't like arsenaling boulder drop, especially early in the game. Mediocre blues are not good to arsenal there. Um, they play Waxing Spectre and attack and then throw a scar for a scar at us. I was very surprised by the scar for a scar, but since we have a zealous belting hand, I'm definitely just going to throw, just go ahead and throw the zealous belting and then the hammer to try and clear the board. You'll notice I retch for the blue almost immediately. I think part of that's just reflex. Um, and then I noticed that it's boulder drop and we wouldn't have go again off the zealous. So I had to pitch the golden sun here to make that happen. So five go again, our opponent decides to take two and lose their waxing specter we throw titan's fist at them and then we're going to arsenal the out muscle setting us up for another potential go again hand on the following turn we're going to put golden sun on the top first when we're looking at this just because it's the best thing we can do playing out muscle and pummel is definitely the correct play here because it is absurdly powerful it's just a very good thing and we guarantee go again but our opponent throws a spectral spectral prowler at us that has phantasm, so I'm just going to block this. I don't want to give them the ability to continue to do other things and attack me more. So we give up the ability to actually play the pummel on the out muscle here, but we are keeping the board as clean as we can, and I think that's a better move to take. We're staying up on life and we're trying to keep the board clear. So on my turn, I lead by throwing out muscle. Now, the beautiful part about this turn is that if my opponent doesn't block with a six, I can just throw Titan's Fist and then arsenal the pummel. If they do block with a six, I can throw the pummel to get a potential on hit effect and try to have the pummel discard effect, which could be very relevant. Now, I would personally rather throw the six and then Titan's Fist here because I want to keep the board clean and I want to be as efficient as possible. And arsenaling the pummel when we have tunic up is the best way to go. Now, our opponent had a that all you got in against me, and I don't know if they just wanted more cards that blocked there. I'm not really sure. I don't really like that choice, but we block with the trounce because it's just the best thing we can be doing right here. Um, yep, and we refresh there off the trounce. We reveal a cranial crush and a debilitate to win the trounce. So now we're looking at being able to play zealous belting into the pummel and then throwing hammer and arsenal the other pummel, which is a very solid play and really sets us up here. We do have to take a little bit of damage. Um, we take one from the Waxing Spectre, we take three from the Restless Coalescence, and then they use Restless Coalescence to make a Spectral Shield and attack for one, and they still arsenal a card, which is a very efficient turn cycle from our opponent there. So we're going to be looking to apply as much pressure as we can and really make this awkward. This is six go again, followed with a pummel into the hammer, um, so we're really looking to clear the board and probably still take some number of cards out of their hand this turn. They're probably going to have to give us cards from hand and give up their board here, or we're going to get some of their board right here. Now, they just have six ward on the board, so they could just keep their hand here if they wanted to. And they end up saying no blocks. We do play the pummel, which I was going to do regardless, pretty much. We're hoping to get a on-hit effect here and make them discard with the pummel. 
So currently looking at six on the board, but I was like, I think our opponent has something pretty solid to do here. They're not able to transcend and then play the chi or get the chi to play unravel aggression, but they end up blocking 10 and then they're still able to keep their spectral shield around. And we throw hammer. Um, I'm assuming that if they like their hand, they're just going to lose the shield and fall to 25, which is exactly what our opponent did here. We're able to arsenal the pummel and set up for a solid play. Now, looking at this hand, we have a lot of very good options here. E-Strike and Zealous Belting are very good. It's also solid to be able to block with the Test of Strength here, which I'm a big fan of. So our opponent's going to throw the um, Spectral Shield at us for two go again, which we're going to say no blocks on. We're just going to take two here. I was like, at least that's what I think. That's what I should do. <laughs> so we take this, and then they throw the Rage Spectre. We block with the Test of Strength, willing to take two here and trying to win this Clash. We win with a Spinal Crush, which is good, but also could be a little bit awkward here. Um, so looking at this hand before I make a play, I think the best thing I can do is go Zealous Belting, use Tunic to play Pummel, and then go E-Strike for 7. It's probably the best play we can make to try and clear the board. We could try to go E-Strike into Snaps to try to set something positive up here. Um, E-Strike and Snaps... We could draw a card to go snaps, um, and then if we draw blue, we throw hammer. And if we draw red, we just have a good... We don't have to use snaps if we draw a red, which means we just have a good arsenal card. So maybe drawing a card here is just a better play. Anytime you have the snapdragons in play, it's probably just a better play. I'm curious to see what I do here. Clearly, I was getting a little click happy there, and I tried to play the E-Strike before the priority window had come through. Um, I do go with buff power. If I was trying to clear their board, buff power might be better, but I think I should have drawn a card there. Drawing a card would have been good because it would have been 5 into 4, or it would have been 5 into a good arsenal. So it would have been 5 into 4 right there, which I think it would have just been more pressure and a good use of our snaps here. So definitely a little bit of a misstep on my part there. All right, so we end up taking 4, and we're just going to throw the Golden Sun here. Overpower is a very good way to try and clear the board um, and to try and make sure that we can really push through what we want here. Now, the one thing that is a little scary is that our opponent has a lot of equipment left. Like, they have a lot of equipment. They have Meridian Pathway, they have Traverse, and they have Uphold Tradition. Now, Uphold Tradition is just an offensive card, but it does have Ward on it, so it's something that they can use defensively after they've played it out offensively. Okay, they end up giving us the Traverse here. I was like, I, I, I vaguely feel like I remember there being like a, a pretty good defensive stand from them here, and they use a chi to like set up something powerful on their next turn. I can't remember. I think they they might play manifestations of mirror guy, manifestation of mirror guy next turn. I think. I also think giving tunic here is extremely incorrect. Extremely incorrect. But it depends on what they're trying to cover up here. It looks like they're trying to cover up the Golden Sun, which I don't really understand because they could be trying to keep their Waxing Spectre, I guess. Could be their thought process here. Not sure. Okay, Moon Chakra. So Drop in the Ocean takes this down to nine. Moon Chakra's for three. So if they, if they end up letting the Waxing Spectre go, it covers exactly nine. And now we're able to Arsenal Command and Conquer looking for a solid play here. Now, this E-Strike is good. Um, I just end up taking two, which I think is correct. Maybe they didn't play Manifestations of Mirror Guy. Maybe I was mistaken. Okay, so they undo their action. Ah, uh, okay. I see. So they end up playing the Rage Spectre, then activate Enigma. So now we're looking at two, um, two go again into the Rage Spectre here. So they're looking at another 8-point turn and setting up some ward for the crack back here. Now, this is an interesting decision um, looking at my hand because I have a commanding conquer there. So we could go E-Strike, um, go again into throw commanding conquer. Okay, so we do. I do end up drawing a card here. And we rip into a pummel, which makes this interesting. Because it means that I'm more than likely going to crack a gold. And if I hit a blue, I get to go Command and Conquer Pummel here. But if I hit a red, I'm still able to throw the uh, Command and Conquer and Arsenal the Pummel. So I think it's a pretty net fine play no matter how we look at it here. 
do use the snaps. Obviously, we ended up drawing a card, so snaps was like was pretty telegraphed here. That's the, one of the problems with Guardian using snaps, in my opinion, is that it is telegraphed. Like it's not very, it's not very like you can't disguise it very well. Okay, so they end up having four here on the board, or maybe it was five. It was five apparently. And then I did not crack the gold there. Part of me wonders if my thought process there was I have a sh I have the shield and two gold, and I want to be saving my gold generation for when, or I want to be saving my gold for when I draw into visit gold main estate, which could be very powerful here. So I don't know. Interesting decision point there for me. Looking back on it, I think it was correct to go get the blue. And right there, we would have been rewarded if I would have cracked the gold because we could have went ten. We could have thrown ten with Command and Conquer instead of six, which meant they were like we would have gotten more cards out of their hand. I guess they're not required to block, but guess they're not required to block. But still, could have been pretty good. Um, you see me playing around the pummel there because they've already shown us two, and you see me blocking to play around the pummel there, um, and. Honestly, looking back on this game, I still agree with it. Um, I remember what they had in Arsenal here. We find out in a couple of turns. But looking back on it, I still think it's correct to play around the pummel right there and just to try and play the best hand that I can right there. The interesting part is that now they throw another Command and Conquer at me, which means I'm now taxed into the same situation. I've decided to play around it one time, so I should play around it again. Um, now... I was like, block with Test of Strength, block with Command and Conquer, and then I get to block with two pieces of equipment. It might have been better to keep the Command and Conquer and block with the Boulder Drop there, just at the possibility that I was able to rip into a blue and then still throw Command and Conquer Pummel. Now, my decision point of keeping the blue and not being a greed monster did work out for me in, the, in this case of the game because I was able to throw Spinal Crush for 9 here, which was really solid. So, after being able to block out what I thought was back-to-back -back Command and Conquer Pummel turns, it ended up being that I can still throw Spinal Crush when it's all said and done with. And we are up 9 points currently, which means we have a little bit of wiggle room, but the one thing that's really concerning about the situation that we're in right now to me is that our opponent has all of their equipment left. They have not used Traverse the Universe. They have not used Uphold Tradition. They have not used Meridian Pathway, and Tunic is on three. We are basically out of equipment, short of Tunic coming back around. And if we do draw Gold Main Estate, we're only going to make three mites because we did have to give up the shield to try and block around the Command and Conquer Pummel play, which I still think was the correct play, considering they've shown us two red pummels at the beginning of the game. They give us an unmovable and fall down to three, which makes sense. We rip into double trounce here. So this is the turn that we find out they had Phantasmoclasm um, in their arsenal instead of a pummel. So we could have played a little bit more greedy here, but I still think this is okay. Um, so we could have played a little bit more greedy, but I think I made the correct play by playing around the um, by playing around the pummel. You'll notice I block with both the trounces here, trying to get a win. So I have Macho and then I have a Rouse on top, which is very unfortunate. I targeted myself, and if you want the truth, I think that was a mistake. I think I should have left my Rouse on top and targeted them at the chances that they did not have an attack next. Now, they they did end up having a five power attack on top of the deck next, but still it would have been it I think that was a more correct decision because they have a lot of misses in their deck. Um, and that would have potentially let us win the trounce there and keep rolling with our turn there. So we throw the hammer here, and then we do have the pummel in our arsenal, which means if our opponent doesn't respect it, we can just kill them out of nowhere. But it's Enigma, so it's not likely that we're just going to be able to kill them out of nowhere with the... We're probably just not going to be able to get them with the pummel here. I mean, it's possible, but I highly unlikely at this point. Um, I would play pummel here if it meant taking more cards out of their hand, like, if our opponent did not play around the pummel and they would potentially die to it, then I would I would 100% play the pummel um, to try and get more cards out of their hand to, like, just kind of, like, make their hand a little bit more awkward. Because anything I can do to put Enigma on the back foot and make their hands awkward are exactly how we end up winning the game as Victor. They block with Traverse the Universe. Okay, looking to go get that chi. Finally going to give up the equipment here to try and get yourself back into a positive spot. 
So Traverse and Tunic is really interesting. I, blocking with Tunic here is interesting. It's, it's I don't know. It's kind of spicy. Um, you'll notice that I just passed there. Looking back on this, I don't agree with that decision. I was definitely supposed to play the pummel there, pitching the choke slam and trying to have. Yeah, I was definitely supposed to. I was definitely supposed to play the pummel there. Um, we could have just won the game, or they would have had to play more defensively there. Um, now, they've thrown five go again at us into five go again, which, considering we were at 11, is a little scary. And there was a chance that they could have had another pummel there. So, this is where... Um, this is where we give up our tunic. We block with choke slam and tunic. Um, I, I think that my play there kind of put us in a little bit of more of an awkward spot that turn. The pummel forces their hand with the chi or with a defense reaction, whichever one they would have had. It does force their hand and make them give us cards in some way, or they do just die. Even if it's just pitching to activate Enigma and then turning on the Meridian pathway so that they still only take one damage there. Um, or I guess they take two damage there. No, the Spectral Shield, they take one, yeah. So if they end up turning on Meridian Pathway there, they only take one, but we're still forcing Meridian Pathway, and we're forcing a card out of their hand right here. So this is for six go again. Our opponent pitches an Unravel Aggression. We play the Pummel just trying to get them, because if they don't have anything, we just get them. And there's kind of like a pause there. Our opponent could have another unmovable. They could have a sink below. There could be a lot of cards here on the table that they could have at this point. Normally, the pause is because they're trying to find a way out of it. Now, I say that, but they did just play the Oasis Respite there, which means they fall down to one. They don't have a card to discard. And then going into our turn, we have full tempo, and hopefully we rip a hand that can apply a lot of pressure here. Um, now, this hand is very good for applying pressure. I can go E-Strike, putting the Rouse on the bottom. Definitely would have put the Rouse on the bottom there first. Um, so it would have been 5 go again. It's 5 go again right here, followed by Command and Conquer or Titan's Fist, whichever one we think might do better um, at winning the game or just continuing to take all the cards out of their hand. Since we've played all three pummels, I'm definitely willing to I'm definitely willing to throw the Command and Conquer here if it means that we're going to. Like if we're if we're going to take all the cards of their hand and ensure that they can't set up or really attack us back or do anything like that. Now they block they only block three and we are coming in for five. Like it's pretty pretty on the nose here. When they flashed in the manifestation of mirror guy right here, I knew that we were in a super positive spot for this turn. And then we get to just throw the command and conquer here. Now it's very fortunate for us that they didn't rip any um that they did not rip any um uh, manifestations earlier in the game really panned out for us but we also haven't played any gold mana states this game so i think i think it kind of balances out here um so they're going to turn on meridian pathway make a spectral shield and then short of you know a miracle here they take two and they die and we're able to close out the game with another solid go again hand on turn seven i had command and conquer pummel and a blue and I think the obvious choice was to crack the gold to try and throw the Command and Conquer and the Pummel. If I hit a blue off the gold, I'm able to play the Command and Conquer and hold up two resources for the Pummel. And when my opponent's at five, that's really solid. If I draw a red, I'm able to pitch the red to throw the Command and Conquer and still arsenal the Pummel. So just throwing the Command and Conquer and not trying to go for the Pummel play, I think was a really big mistake right there. On turn 10, I threw Titan's Fist at my opponent while having a Pummel in Arsenal and the blue in hand to play it. My opponent blocks with Tunic and Traverse, and I did not play the Pummel there. I think this was also a mistake because if I play the Pummel, I am at minimum forcing the Chi out of my opponent's hand. Now, if they have a defense reaction in their hand, it works the same way, but the Chi gets it out of their hand, gets rid of Meridian Pathway, and clears the Spectral Shield, which their next turn was like 5 go again, 5 go again into a Scar for a Scar, which means their turn would have been a lot less impactful, and I probably could have kept my life total just a little bit higher. Guys, if you see anything you think I missed, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear about it. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take it easy, guys.